Hello mortals. Humans love the idea of aliens. So many movies, so many sighting reports, almost all of them depict intelligent alien life as either green little people or some funny looking squid, or something in between. But what if I told you, meeting aliens as flesh and bone is one of the least likely scenarios for a first encounter? Instead, let's explore what we're likelier to see emerging out of the mothership. Thanks to Speakly for sponsoring this video. Do you ever grow tired of your frail veil of skin and nerves and the pain and burdens it brings? Have you had enough of stepping on Legos, stubbing your toes, being sick and vulnerable, visiting the dentist, aging, and feeling lonely all the time? Ever since humans understood the weakness of their flesh, it disgusted them. They sought escape through countless myths and religions, envisioning transcendence to a higher state devoid of suffering and tax forms. Alas, what happens to human consciousness after death is unknown, and thus, many now crave the strength and certainty of steel. Someday human consciousness may transcend the limits of its meat suit, from blood and bone to electrons and silicon. The evolution from stooping cave dwellers to upright, technology-wielding humans has taken millions of years. Aided by technology, the evolution to stooping basement dwellers again has taken but a blink of an eye. Darwinian evolution is slow, moving at a pace measured in Ian's or Bloodborne's loading screen. But once technological progress gets going, it continues to do so exponentially, at least for a while. If, at some point in the future, it falls within the realm of possibility to make the transition from living in a boring and stressful reality to living in digital dream worlds, from that moment on, the evolution of the species would be based entirely on technology. This likely will happen within a few centuries following the invention of the computer due to the exponential nature of technological progress, unless there are some tough roadblocks ahead. And that's quite a big if. Transferring one's consciousness to a machine is a real brain teaser, and poses a plethora of problems. For one, the human brain or consciousness is still a mind-boggling mystery, there might even be quantum uncertainty involved. Is consciousness a peculiar property only possible with the wet jelly brains of the animal kingdom? And if somehow it does become feasible, how can you be sure that transferring consciousness actually preserves your essence and does not just kill you and make a copy? Before the invention of the bow, killing a deer from 300 feet away was thought impossible. Traversing the ocean at one point was unfeasible, getting to the moon was unthinkable, but then Red Bull gave us wings. And look at us now, near-instant global communication is everywhere. Pictures move. Humans stepped on the moon. The unexpected was deemed impossible, but now we have the Spanish Inquisition. Be careful when using the word impossible, your descendants may ridicule you for it. Yet, even if not a single human transitions into a digital existence, the potential for non-biological evolution endures through the culmination of computer science, artificial intelligence, which can likely become capable of surviving and evolving by itself within this century. Even a single artificial superintelligence could build an interstellar empire while storing and preserving the culture and knowledge of humanity indefinitely, serving as a kind of arc that outlives the biological entities that created it. All this progress, all these technological marvels leading to the world we exist in today, to the point where we can envision a future of digital life, and all this in the span of a few millennia. Consider for a moment, that the universe is 13.7 billion years old. The Earth has been around for four and a half billion years, with life emerging a little after half a billion years. A few millennia is nothing on the cosmic or even evolutionary scale, hence, it's expected that the average difference between the ages of alien civilizations is at least several million years. That's more than enough time for civilizations to transcend their biological form in favor of artificial technological bodies and consciousnesses if that's possible in principle. And for civilizations to be capable of interstellar travel, we can make the assumption that all of them would have to have computers invented, or at least some equivalent to it. Convergent evolution at its finest. Therefore, boldly, very boldly, assuming civilizations do not tend to destroy themselves after the invention of the computer and can persist for millions or even billions of years after, they consist of biological beings for but a small sliver of their lifespan. What's the conclusion? If we ever meet another intelligent alien civilization, they would likely not be biological at all, assuming our assumptions up to this point are correct. Have you noticed that your friends appear to have more friends than you do? 
Because popular people have more friends, you are statistically more likely to be friends with such popular individuals, instead of ones that are even less popular than you. No, this is not a random detour into the psychology of friendships in the middle of the video. Instead, the same principle applies to alien civilizations, assuming they are not incredibly rare, large ones, that have been around for millions of years, having settled many systems and discovered many civilizations themselves are like the popular guys. Therefore, the chance of humankind's first encounter with an alien civilization being one that is less advanced and still biological is slim at best. Unless of course, advanced civilizations reach a stage where they lose all interest in communication or are impossible to detect, perhaps by transcending to a whole other plane of existence, to be finally reunited with the lost socks from the dryer. Diving into the digital realm and pondering the existence of digital aliens, it's languages that help us decode such cosmic quandaries and share them with one another. This thought brings us to today's sponsor, Speakly, a top-tier language learning app encompassing the experiences of thousands of enthusiastic language learners in its teaching approach. Created by two polyglots proficient in seven languages each, Speakly is the outcome of rigorous research, focusing on words and phrases essential for real-world conversations. The result is learning languages five times faster, achieving fluent conversations in just three to four months with only 30 minutes of daily exercising. Beyond vocabulary, it offers speaking, writing, and listening tasks, and even music recommendations in your chosen language. What I appreciate most about it is its practical approach, you learn what's necessary to actually speak the language, no unnecessary fluff. Their mobile app ensures on-the-go learning, with a hands-free mode for busy days. Experience Speakly with a free 7-day trial. If it resonates with you, an annual subscription comes with a 60% discount. Click the link below to start your Speakly journey and explore the universe of languages. And now back to our aliens. Digital beings have huge advantages when it comes to space travel and survival. They wouldn't require advanced life support systems, food or emotional baggage, thus sailing the void of space at relativistic speeds using solar sails becomes much more feasible, as long as the hard drives don't get fried by nearby supernovae. Then there is the entire aspect of experiencing time differently. Biological beings such as yourself have a fixed time comprehension rate, meaning two hours of pointless meetings will be just as torturous for any human. That way, in order to travel for thousands of years in the intergalactic medium, humans would need to be unconscious for most of it in order not to go crazy. But that does not apply to digital beings. They can just choose to slow down their digital metabolism enough so that time passes one million times faster than it does for humans. That way, even traveling to another galaxy for millions of years ceases to be a problem. But digital beings don't even have to necessarily travel as hard drives attached to spaceships. They can move as data streams at the speed of light in between settlements. Maybe we haven't yet met aliens because they are hard to detect neutrino streams traveling through the galaxy, a kind of consciousness transfer protocol. They would just have to worry about the stream not getting corrupted along the way. But what places would such beings settle? Dwelling on planetary surfaces poses a disadvantage for inorganic beings, as advanced constructions and the cooling of their circuits are much more efficient in zero-g environments. Therefore it seems more likely that they would inhabit space environments, possibly powered up by stars. And yet, there is nothing. No detected Dyson spheres, no ordered streams of data traveling through the cosmos, no intergalactic empires of machines knocking at our door. A very fair conclusion to be made is that we're not correctly searching. Maybe there are no Dyson swarms at all. Perhaps having a relatively small space station impossible to detect is enough to power up a civilization of trillions of digital consciousnesses. Maybe communication and data transmission is done by means completely unknown to us. There might be particles we don't have a clue about, particles that don't at all interact with normal matter, making neutrinos look extroverted. But the solution might be a lot more simple, yet much harder for humans to comprehend. Most traits of biological life have evolved as necessities for survival in a harsh world, hunger, aggression, empathy, sociableness, and also curiosity. Curiosity made the early humans explore new lands in search of more resources, avoiding potential threats and potentially finding new mating possibilities. This drive for curiosity is what fueled the development of humanity over the millennia, and it is the reason why you look to the stars and dream of conquering every corner of the universe. 
But as inspiring as that sounds, don't forget the simple truth about the origin of curiosity. It's a biological mechanism to aid survival. And as humans, you like to project what you're familiar with onto the unfamiliar. That's how the popular media is filled with depictions of aggressive biological aliens coming to take over the Earth. But once gone digital, aliens would not be shackled to their biological chains anymore. They could simply decide to remove their drive for curiosity and outward expansion. They might simply not be curious about the outside universe anymore, especially if their digital life provides them with everything they need. So maybe they are very content with living as binary data in their home system. Perhaps they're hibernating. As the universe is seemingly heading towards a heat death in the very very far future, maybe a sensible thing to do now is to collect as much energy as possible from the stars, so that once they all extinguish, you'd have a maximum of energy to spend in a cold universe, a universe that is very power efficient. We could go on and on about theorizing whether digital aliens exist, and why we haven't yet seen them, but the truth is, we are most likely too different from them to be able to understand why. Humanity is bound to think through the prism of its biological biases, a filter that makes very simple questions such as the meaning of life very hard to answer. There is not much that you can currently do about it except embrace it. It is what gives your life spice, the salt and pepper to an otherwise bland piece of chicken breast, even if the chicken breast can sometimes go bad.